I'm Matthew Burton. I'm a research officer here at Specific, and I look at thermometric materials. In short, that is turning heat sources into electricity. So the name of the paper is Printed Thermometrics. It's a review paper looking at the literature of printed thermometric materials. It covers um, from the inception of this idea through to modern day usage of the technique. So when the lockdown struck and I wasn't allowed to do any work in the lab, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to me to summarize in a review paper what the field of printed thermometrics is. And it's massively moved on in the last five years. The advent of being able to 3D print thermometric materials has made them far more efficient. And if you look at recent examples of 3D printed thermometric materials, they're now around the 70% efficiency of commercially manufactured materials. If this trajectory was to continue, they'd be more efficient than commercial materials fairly soon. The move to net zero will require a diverse range of um, green energy sources. Whilst um, solar and wind are absolutely vital in this, by themselves for the UK to be uh, energy secure, they will not manufacture enough electricity. So therefore, we need a wider range of green technologies. And there is a lot of waste heat out there, um, especially when you look at things like steelworks and glass manufacturing. And if we can use these thermometric generators to harvest some of this waste heat, they can be a vital part of our network grid to allow us to slow transition towards a net zero society. Well, with printing, you don't have these high temperature, high pressure requirements. It allows you to manufacture these materials much more cheaply. Now, this is important because at the moment, thermometric generators are very expensive to manufacture which leads to, to them being used in very few um, sources. You can find some niche examples in space, but beyond that, they're not widely adopted. But if we can manufacture them more cheaply, we can therefore put them in waste heat sources like steel or glassworks initially, and therefore they can start, start generating use for electricity. Recently, there was a study of thermometric generators in the steelworks, and it showed that it takes seven years through current manufacturing techniques for the steel company to recoup their investment. The idea of printed thermometrics is therefore to reduce this time drastically, making them far more appealing for use in industry. So one of the advantages of printing is the fact that you can make custom shaped uh, materials. So at the moment, um, these high pressure uh, manufacturing techniques result in flat materials, because if you imagine if you're pushing something down with a lot of pressure, ultimately it's gonna form a flat surface at the bottom. Now, in theory, you could try and cut these materials to match curved shapes, but due to the nature of crystal structures as thermometric materials, they're quite brittle materials. However, if you're printing materials, you don't have this high pressure requirement, and therefore you can make nice curved shapes. Now, if you think about waste heat sources, they're most commonly on curved surfaces like pipes. So if you can only make flat generators, they're not very uh, useful to align onto a curved shape of a pipe. But with printing, in theory, you can go find your waste heat source, um, draw it out, and then come back and custom make a printed generator just to match that exact geometry. And therefore, printed thermometrics have a potential for much wider applications than planar, typically manufactured ones at the moment. So one of the key ones to look at at the moment would be steelworks because they generate a lot of waste heat that's vented to atmosphere. So these could be used in steelworks to harness some of their waste heat and reduce um, their steelworks demand on the grid, or simply just to add some electricity back to the grid. But it's not just steelworks where we could use the um, thermometric generators. There are plenty of other waste heat generating industries out there, such as glass or to a certain degree, the nuclear industry itself. As um, printed thermometrics can evolve in the future, and we can hopefully drive down the cost of making thermometric generators, we could potentially expand their use into the more domestic setting as well. And therefore, um, heat pipes that you may have inside your house eventually may be able to have thermometric generators attached to them to generate useful electricity. 
another potential um, use would also be to make self-powered sensors. So rather than having to have a battery that would endlessly have to get changed or for annoying wires to be used for a, a sensor to be um, powered, if a scenario if in a scenario there is a waste heat source, you could in theory use a thermoelectric generator to power a sensor. So this has potential uses in steelworks where they want to monitor temperature of devices that have a lot of waste heat, but they don't want to endlessly change a battery. If you can put thermoelectric generators there, you can have a self-powered um, self-powered sensor that therefore doesn't need any maintenance at all. 